many consider to be the most beautiful church in the Adirondack Mountains, New York State's North Country, but it has a select congregation few of us will be members of. It is found inside the walls of the Clinton Correctional Facility at Dannemora, New York, a maximum security prison. It is the Church of the Good Thief, St. Dismas. St. Dismas, we also call him the good thief, St. Dismas was the prisoner that was crucified next to Jesus, the one who said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. It was St. Dismas who Jesus said, and we call him the first saint, because he, Jesus said to him on the cross, you will be with me today in paradise. A convicted thief and political insurgent, Dismas was the only saint canonized by Christ himself and the only saint canonized while he was still alive. As unlikely as his story may seem, the story of the first freestanding church to be built inside a prison in the United States, a church dedicated to St. Dismas, is just as improbable. It began with Father Ambrose Highland coming to Dannemora in 1937. Father Highland, when he arrived here at Clinton Correctional Facility, found that where they celebrated Mass, which was in the auditorium of the facility, underneath our mess hall, just didn't seem to be an adequate place. And so we had a vision and a dream, and St. Dismas Church as a result of his dream, and also a tremendous effort. From the beginning, there were major difficulties. The New York League for the Separation of Church and State objected. The court ruled the church could be built in keeping with the freedom of worship as expressed in the Constitution. Next came the problem of what to build the church with. Father Highland, in his own words, confessed, I bummed and chiseled and begged. Well, from what I've read and what I've heard that the wood, uh, mostly everything in the church has been refurbished from old materials, different structures from locally, from Lion Mountain, barns, uh, basically used materials whatever they can get their hands on. The next big question then became labor. The answer came as Father Highland discovered hidden talents and dusted off forgotten skills, like converting a forger into a stained glass artisan. There was an inmate named Sirachi. He was initially in prison for forgery. Uh, There's a firm from New York City that came up here and instructed him on how to do it. Uh, being an artist, he quickly picked it up. And as the story goes, the faces, with the exception of the females, in the uh, stations were supposedly inmate volunteers that helped with the labor on the church. Like the child in the station with an adult face. One woman Sirachi did from memory because it was his lover, an aspiring actress from New York City who later became his wife. There are 58 major characters and 14 main windows, and all but one are faces of inmates who posed for them. The talents of Carmelo Louis Sirachi eventually won his freedom when a judge studied his handiwork, reviewed his case, and ordered him released on February 10, 1962. Another story tells of how an inmate sculpting the crucifixion of St. Dismas that adorns a side altar in the chapel achieved such a high degree of realism. There's one story, and it could be truth and it could be hearsay, that he wanted the statue of Dismas to have a certain look, and the prisoner that was posing for it just didn't have that pain look on his face. <laughs> so they gave him some pain so, so the statue would really show forth uh, the suffering that the St. Dismas would be going through on the cross next to Jesus. The six-foot Gothic lanterns of hand-wrought iron and colored glass overhead were created by Clinton Correctional inmates. The pews were built at the prison from Appalachian Red Oak, donated by former inmate Charles Lucky Luciano. Marble for the altar was donated by the Provenzano family, friends of Luciano. 
The angel carvings at the backdrop of the altar came from Ferdinand Magellan's flagship that was wrecked in the Philippines in 1521. They were donated by the Countess Marie de la Trova, a direct descendant of the Portuguese explorer. To the left of the painting of the crucifixion of St. Dismas is a painting of Magellan leaving the port of Spain, being blessed by the bishop before his departure. To the right is a painting that portrays Magellan's death in the Philippines at the hands of natives. The crucifix above the altar was made by the Oramagot passion players of Bavaria. The talents of the inmates eventually reached the grounds around the church, where they made a recreation of the grotto at Lord's France. It was completed and dedicated in 1944. It is said that once a convict is too tough for any place else, he goes to Clinton. No matter how tough he is, though, once he steps through the church doors, all else is left outside. The men who come here come up the hill to St. Dismas Church because it's like almost an escape for them. It's like leaving the jail, even though they're within the walls of the jail on the weekend. And many of them tell me, in this place they find peace. They find solitude. They find the expression that they need to get them through the days of the week. The church was dedicated on the Feast of St. Augustine, August 28, 1941, and selected as a National Historic Site in 1991. An unlikely church, in an unlikely location, dedicated to an unlikely saint. To honor St. Dismas on his day, March 25th, Dempster McMurphy of the New York Daily News wrote this in 1939. There are so many better advertised saints, all specialists, that few mortals bother much with this hoodlum saint who roams the outfield of eternity, making shoestring catches of souls. A saint who has no following to speak of, no medals, no propaganda. There's nothing to recommend him, really, except for the fact that to no other saint in the calendar did the Son of God make the witness statement, you fill the bill which helps explain why those who do believe in Dismas believe in him all the way. When you believe You're touching the earth and the sky Life is a blink Death is a tear And eternity's eye